Well, granted, there's no satisfying thump alerting you that your newspaper has landed outside your door. But when you click on a digital news site, you can be sure the people behind it are working very hard to grab your attention. As more and more of us get our news online, what's it like to try to meet that need? And how do you build a working business model? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, here to give us their answers and tell us why they yell, stop the presses, or just how they do it with the digital edition, <laughs> are the editors of two Brooklyn Media online outlets. Lena Zagari is the editor and publisher of Brooklyner, which reports from a number of our neighborhoods. Welcome to BK Live. Glad to be here. And Steve Kep has the same role with the brand new site, The Bridge, which is the focus, has its focus, on Brooklyn and business news. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Is it Liana? It's Liana. It's Liana. It's okay. He was focusing so hard on yeah. Zagari <laughs> that he then said Liana. Thank you for joining Thanks us, for Liana. That reel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the neighborhood blogs that are now a part of Corner Media Group have been around for close to a decade. Uh, how has the digital media landscape changed over those years, even since you formed Corner Media just five years ago? Right. Uh, I started one of those early sites mm -hmm. called Litmus Park blog at the time. And that was in 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. which was the prime time for blogs. Right. That was how you did it. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. I think it was Blogger, and uh, yeah. you know, everyone yeah. had a blog. Everyone and had a we blog had a, uh, a blog about the neighborhood, and there were a few others. And over the years, there's been consolidation. Mm -hmm. People have lives, people move on. If you cannot make your blog a business, you it's going to stop at some point. Yeah. So hearing that, mm -hmm. what made you say, hey, there's a hole in this landscape. Let me get into this business that's expanding and contracting every 10 years. Right, right. Well, I've lived in Brooklyn a long time, and I re recognize that it was really changing from a bedroom community into a place where people uh, did not go into Manhattan to work. And there's lots of new mm -hmm. startups and uh, a real tech hub that's developing with the, the two universities downtown with uh, City Tech and the Tandon School of Engineering. And then Dumbo just became this amazing uh, info uh, media center. And there was just a, a lot of, of businesses to cover that I didn't think that the mainstream media emanating from Manhattan was really, was really catching. Can we talk about mm -hmm. that relationship between Brooklyn and Manhattan? It's like we often like to puff up and say, you know, if we were our own city, we'd, but the fact is that we are our own city in the larger city connected to that monster across the water. So how does Brooklyn maintain and create its own news for its own audience when we are so much tied to Manhattan? Like, is it a viable thing that we can sort of be our own little province and make businesses work. I think absolutely. I mean, over three, like, was it over three million? Mm -hmm. About three million people live here. And, you know, you want to know what's happening around the place where you live, yeah. where you right. shop, where your kids go to school, you know, where you go out to eat. And even if you do commute into Manhattan, that is, um, you know, just one part of your day. Yeah. Two thirds of it is actually probably in Brooklyn. And it's the best place to live if you never want to leave. Right. We've got everything. We've got the ocean, we've got the river, we've got the parks, you know, yeah. why leave? It used to be you had to go into Manhattan to get things. Mm -hmm. Even like shopping, you'd go into Manhattan and there was an economic term for that which is leakage, meaning that mm -hmm. the dollars were leaking from Brooklyn into Manhattan because there were, weren't places to shop. Mm -hmm. Likewise jobs. If you get off the F train now at the York Street stop coming from Manhattan, it's full of people all getting out yeah. of, uh, to work in Dumbo. Yeah. So there's you really, it is a more self-focused city not so much inward because there's so many immigrants and new things happening all the time that it's, I wouldn't say it's insular, but it certainly feels, has a sense of self that it didn't have before. Yeah, I mentioned that on the show before. It used to be that everyone used to only get out at J Street, and now yeah. there's an yeah. equal number of people flooding in and out at York as there yeah. are at J. So you mentioned, Lana, you know, if you make it profitable, then you stick around, and if you don't, you don't. How do you make it profitable? It's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. I mean, news is an incredibly expensive business in the sense that people is your biggest expense. It's being able to re report on so many different neighborhoods, the way we were doing it was incredibly labor intensive. Um, but we do have support from local businesses, small and big, and including hospitals and institutions like that. And um, yeah, our roots are in southern Brooklyn, so right. it's um, 
the part that is not so fancy. It's mm -hmm. not Williamsburg, but it is where a lot of people in Brooklyn actually live. So yeah. they care. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of people to represent. How do you then maintain your work-life balance? Because I wonder <laughs> about this with my friends who are journalists and are working in always digital media. There's always the more. It's 24-7. It's 24-7. Mm -hmm. It's 24-7. We made a decision not to publish on weekends because at some point we were just like, we're not a huge media company. Yeah. It's just a handful of us. Like, we need to sleep. So Monday is when you catch up with the news, what yeah. happened in well, the weekend. I think that's a great decision. Steve, uh, how do you do it? You came from the other world into this world. Right. What's the difference there? I, I came from magazines, mm -hmm. Time Inc., and, um, uh, but I also worked on the website, so I kind of knew what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, as a small you know, business, a sole proprietor, you realize that you're on all the time. I, mm -hmm. I had the family on spring break last week and realized Wait a minute! I'm I'm writing There's about no Florida. I'm from in Florida, writing about Brooklyn. This is really str uh, too much. But it was, but it's very exciting. Um, I just try to pick my battles in terms of the best feature stories. Um, but sometimes there's new business, real business news. Like uh, the other day, United Technologies decided to to put in 250 uh, tech people in Dumbo, and that's that's a really big deal. And so mm -hmm. I'd haul off and do a news story about that. Well, you mentioned that you uh, were at Time Inc. You worked on that big book and the digital stuff, and there's a lot of shrinkage in that business with the traditional model. Like mm -hmm. all of our friends become freelancers and mm -hmm. people are just scrapping together jobs. So what made you say, oh yeah, I'm gonna leave this safe and secure institution and go out there and start plugging away. Now you're writing about Brooklyn right. while you're in Florida. Well, it was so tempting because there were so many great stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd spent you know, my whole adult life there basically and I thought if I don't do this now, I'll, I'll, I'll miss the story and yeah. so, so it seemed like a, a really good timing. Um, and it's great to just not have to cross the bridge um, and mm -hmm. find stories here. And, and, and it's just more of a do-it-yourself experience, but, but really fun. Right. And maybe it's feeling less safe and secure for all the reasons you just mentioned. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> there's, there's, there's just <laughs> nonstop disruption no matter who you are um, in the business. I mean, there has been a, a, a huge boost to big outfits like the Washington Post and New York Times lately because of, of what's going on in Washington. Yeah. Uh, we don't necessarily benefit from that boost here, but Brooklyn's a, a really happening place, and so we're kind of riding that wave. So, Leanna, yeah. you had all of these different properties, and now you've put them under the wider umbrella of Brooklyner. Was that a business decision driven, or was it more editorial? Like, why did you decide to consolidate our cliques? It was both. Um, Brooklyn, as Steve said, is, is feeling a lot more connected these days. And some of that is due to social media and Facebook and Instagram and like everybody being able to connect and discover across the boundaries. So um, it's no longer like super distinct neighborhoods, like Fort Greene never connects mm -hmm. with Bensonhurst. I mean, that is just not true. Like yeah. people go back and forth and they have cousins and somebody moved. So. Um, and there was this demand from our readers to like know about like what's what food places are opening, like what's cool and interesting. So. Right. Just it was a because bit of both. it's impossible to get to one neighborhood <laughs> from the other via the trains doesn't mean we can't. It can really connect. does not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bus. Well, <laughs> exactly. Now we have city, now we have city bike, exactly. So and there's, true. you know, there's going to be ferries, so you can go from Dumbo to Bay Ridge, and um, you know, it, it is right. a lot more connected. Right. Um, but uh, also, it was the decision that I was running essentially five daily papers, and you know, again, it just we're got not to a big staff, so like right. it was a lot more logistically feasible to do it on one site. And so now it's, it's one site, but if I'm correct, the Facebook right, and maybe the Instagram the have stayed separate. So what's exactly. the thinking behind that? Um, it gives more of a community feel. So people in Sheep's Head can have their conversations and comments and like still have that community on Facebook and um, you know check in with the rest of it when they feel like it. So you uh, mentioned City Bike is a thing. I know on your site right now, there's some little secret hacky sort of things that you yeah. might not have known about City Bike. So I'm gonna ask both of you, what kind of things are driving clicks in traffic to your sites? Because everyone is trying to get what's the secret sauce. Rupert Murdoch is buying up tiny newspapers, trying to get the feeling that you guys are producing. So what are people in Brooklyn interested in? Well, one thing is, it, it, on, on my site, people are really interested in what's being made in Brooklyn. So if you are a small business and you start, there's a, a guy making eyeglasses in the Brooklyn Army Terminal, custom frames, and that, that you know, he'd worked for Goldman Sachs before. So there's some really dramatic personal entrepreneurial stories. 
another woman uh, was making uh, these fancy pop tarts called Meg Pies, and now they're sold in all Starbucks across the country. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of interest in the kind of tension between mm -hmm. the development and the high cost of real estate and people wanting to, to do business here. Um, the most traffic story we had was about a, a bookstore going out of business on, uh, on a street in Cobble Hill and an, a novelist rushing to the rescue to start a re, sort of a replacement mm -hmm. bookstore. Yeah. And that, that really got a lot of traction because it's so many Br Brooklyn threads coming together, you know, the loss of something old and the arrival of something new. So mm -hmm. what's a clear hit? Like, you know, if you have someone write about this, you're going to get some traffic. Um, I mean, unfortunately, crime is always uh, something that drives mm -hmm. a lot of attention. But uh, real estate is a big one. And real estate, in the same way that you were describing, the development, commercial real estate, whether it's a coffee shop or a restaurant or a mom and pop shop opening or closing, mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. And rents are so crazy that you know, whether you're renting for your own purposes or you're trying to open a business, like that, th that is a big story across the borough. Steve, Leanna mentioned um, what her crew is doing to kind of make a balance happen for their work. We heard that you were your only full-time employee. Is that still true? Well, it's still true. I have uh, quite a network, though, of freelance people, uh, okay. folks who are uh, either my digital advisors or, um, or developers or, or people like that. Uh, I have a part-time photo editor. I think that's really important on the, on the web is to have great pictures. And a lot of these folks I have experience with places that I'd worked before like Time or Newsweek or Fortune. And they're in between gigs or they're semi-retired or they're just out of school and I'm sort of being, you know, training them. So it's, it's a, a bit of a uh, thrown together group of irregulars, I guess, <laughs> is the military term. But it's working because mm -hmm. people have different proclivities. If somebody's really interested in a story, they'll work for cheaper than... <laughs> If they were. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I kind of work with that, with people's passion and interests. So what's it take to get on your blogosphere then? If there is some person who is second acting their way into a life, leaving one career and saying, oh yeah, I used to do journalism, then I got a real job, or some young person who's out of college, how do they find you guys and submit their stuff? Mm -hmm. um, well, they seem to find us and some of their stuff. <laughs> okay. uh, there's, um, there's a million stories to be told, and there are a lot of storytellers that live in Brooklyn and care deeply about their neighborhoods. I mean, just the other day, like we had this tip about um, an oil, uh, a gas leak in um, Gravesend, mm -hmm. and you know, the next day, some kid emailed over a drone video, and I was just like, this is like, wow. you know, great. Good job, you know, and so we had a breaking story. But that was again totally because of people like caring about the neighbors. Like this is strange. There's like something happening here, and um, yeah, I so they it. will. So, so where are you so they can reach you? We are at mm -hmm. Brooklyner.com. Excellent. Send all your drone videos. Send all your drone videos. Whatever you have. Yeah. Whatever you have. <laughs> Take them too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. We're Steve, how can we get in touch with you? Um, Steve at thebridgebk.com or editor at thebridgebk.com. Well, thank so you both you. for being here. Our daily clicks live yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. We appreciate you coming by. Thanks for having me.